Jets. And uh, Andrew Whitworth is now joining us live. By the way, the seventh highest graded offensive lineman in the league last year. And he's got a little gray in that beard, so he's a veteran now. And so let's talk Matt Stafford. Just just give me, you know, the cadence, the style, the difference, he and Goff. Can you kind of sense it, the voice, the cadence, the style, the the the, the way he plays? Yeah, I think it's pretty easy to tell with, with Matthew that he's been in the league for quite some time. He's got that field general presence where uh, sometimes he's got certain things he wants to do with the football in a way he wants to run certain plays and call certain cadences um, that he sees as an advantageous thing for the team, not just uh, maybe the simplest way to do it. And, and I think it's one of those things where you can feel that he's played a lot of football and had a lot of experience on the field and knows what's going to be successful for us and kind of has a feel for now that he's getting to know all the ins and outs of our offense and how we used to have done things, he can add his little touch to maybe some things that he wants to do differently. So I thought it was interesting. When Cam Akers got hurt, I had said on the air, I said, you cannot win this division without a running game. It's just too physical. You you have to have a running game. You can't put Matt Stafford back in the pocket 48 times like the Steelers last year with Big Ben. And then you go out and you get Sony Michelle. Uh, give me your thoughts on Cam and Sony and their similarities as backs. Well, I think really for for Sony, I think it's that patient running. You watch him run. You can see a guy's played in a lot of big football games. He's a lot of, had a lot of experience winning and playing winning football. And then you watch him run. The patience he runs with, really the ability to just get everything out of every play. I think Cam was that way. Well, you did a really great job of that at the end of the season. You look at the way Cam ran and really came on there the last part of the year, the patience he was running with and making stuff out of plays that sometimes weren't there. And then when he got plays that were there, he got the most out of it. And I think Sony's that same kind of runner. And they, they are guys that are going to be coached hard by Thomas Brown. I think Thomas was actually with them at Georgia. So ought to be a great relationship there. And we're looking forward to getting him on the field. By the way, um, you had an MCL tear in Week 10. You came back, by the way, and played in the playoffs, so that's the Andrew Whitworth we love. Um, you only gave up in 402 passing snaps last year a sack. If, if you today were to compare yourself to rookie Andrew Whitworth out of LSU to today, do you look at the rookie Andrew and think, oh, you dumb kid, you don't know what you're doing? How have you, all these years later, become so proficient at pass blocking because the athletes are better. You face faster athletes. You face bigger athletes. We all know this. Everybody's getting bigger, stronger, and you often face the most athletic guy. What is the secret sauce to your growth as a left tackle? I think really if you had to sum it up the easiest way, it's it's adaptation. You know, uh, Just try to find a way to adapt and survive in the league you play in. I think that if I looked at rookie film, I also was probably playing an under center offense where the quarterback was always under center. Right. A lot of two back. Uh, just a way different game. I mean, a game that's completely nothing, looks nothing like what the, the tape you see now on the football field in 2020 and 2021. And so I think it's one of those things that uh, you learn to adapt. Your body, how you move your mobility, all those things. And that's something I've been able to do over the years. And I think something I really credited myself with is every offseason, finding that way I needed to adapt to be ready to play in this league and what the league is now. And funny enough, Colin, is, you know, you, you mentioned it earlier, talking about the people down in Louisiana. And I want to say that as well. Our hearts and, and our thoughts are with them. In 2006, my senior year in, at college was Hurricane Katrina. And so uh, I well know what these guys are going through, and I know they're displaced right now. So uh, all those guys down there at LSU, man, our hearts and, and thoughts are with you. And I can't wait for you guys to get back and support your state the way we got the opportunity to my senior year. By the way, you dealt with some fires a couple years ago, Thousand Oaks. So you were displaced and the team was a little bit. You've dealt with that in your entire career. When, when you look at the Rams, it's an interesting, you know, I, I've said this, is, is uh, McVay is like the Pied Piper. He decided a few years ago, I'm not playing my starters. And now 90% of the league, especially the young coaches, they're like, well, we're not playing our starters. It's, it's interesting. Like, clearly it doesn't affect um, winning and losing. For me as a sportscaster, Andrew, the part I struggle with is it, it's a big mirage. Is Trey Lance good or is he playing against four stringers? Like, I, what can I, if a fan's watching you now, and, and, and you could say, okay, this is what you should watch in the preseason, even if backups play, this is important, and maybe this is hard to judge. Well, I think it, I think it's hard to judge, really, some of the success you're going to have offensively because 
you look now, almost every team uh, from the preseason tapes I've cut on, you know, it's very vanilla on offense. It's like we're going to take some play action shots and the drop back game. We're going to run a couple screens, maybe. But you're not going to see all the stuff that every team's going to run week in and week out in the NFL throughout the regular season. So these offenses have been really reduced down to simplicity. And and even some of the young success you see some of these quarterbacks have, it's, it's more throwing a bomb down the field in a one-on-one situation right. or, you know, a guy who's willing to take a chance. And it's not really – you're not seeing them really truly read defenses and coverages and getting all these hidden coverages and guys masking different coverages, whether it's man, zone, all this – uh, you're not going to see as much of that. So you're really only going to be able to watch the one-on-one battles and say, hey, how did this receiver match up in one-on-one down the field? How did this quarterback do delivering balls You know, where only his guy can get it and really having time and accuracy of plays that he's playing? And then really the big guys. It's watching the linemen up front say, hey, can these guys protect the quarterback or can they not? They're going to be a lot of just straight rushes, not as many complex, complex blitzes and stuff. And uh, we're going to get to see whether our guys can protect and whether we got defensive linemen that can rush the quarterback. So you guys, you are the highest rated offensive lineman for the Rams, and it was the third highest rated offensive line. Um, I'm not. I'm. I. I do look at you and I think, okay, Andrew, this could be the last year, and that does worry me. And I've talked to Les Snead about that. Like, there's just not a lot of left tackles on the market. College football gives us about three a year. We always talk quarterbacks. Not a lot of great left tackles. What will be the deciding factor for you? What will be the moment this year, Andrew, that you go, all right, it's been great. I, I got my money set, my family, I got my health. What will be the moment you'll make that decision? I think really it's about the level of play. If, if I can continue to play at the level I expect of myself each and every week and uh, be able to do that consistently throughout the year, I've always said this. It's like from week one to week 17, Uh, my play should do nothing but get better and and I should be able to get better and better throughout the season. And I really should feel like by the season ending, I should be ascending and feeling like, you know what, uh, I'm at the top of my game this season. And I, and I think that's something that if you're honest with yourself, you can feel and and know, and, um, I've always felt like I'll be my harshest critic and, and, uh, you know what, that's something that's always been something I've been about is being able to break myself down and see where I'm really at. And I thought last year, honestly, just, being real is I thought I was having one of the best seasons I've had. And, and I really felt like the first part of the season was going really well and in the run game, pass game, everything, and just an unfortunate injury. So I'm excited for the opportunity to get out there and prove that I can still play at that level. And if I can, and I can continue to get better and better every week. Uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, I'm going into it one week at a time and going to give it my best. I've, I'm going to be the oldest guy. I'm going to be the guy coming off an injury. I got plenty of excuses, <laughs> but uh, I'm just going out to shoot my shot. Uh, yeah, you are actually the oldest offensive lineman in the NFL. I can say that you turned 40 in December. You know what? Listen, I'm in my mid-50s, Andrew. Don't listen to anybody. I just went to Chicago for the weekend. It's a good time. I can, you know what? Sometimes the old thing, Joy, it, look at me. I'm nothing but fun. All it's, day. it's a privilege to be old. <laughs> that that's is. Right. That's right. It's a privilege to turn 40 in December. By the way, LSU, what's the line on that, Ryan? It's off the ball. Oh, because of the uh, the hurricane they're facing. Okay, LSU's in town this weekend against UCLA. UCLA is my dark horse in college football this year. I got them winning eight, nine games. I may just see you there, Andrew. It's great seeing you again, and good luck. Hey, I appreciate it always. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.